In today's video, I'm so excited, you guys, because I have several Dollar Tree Farmhouse DIYs for you that you're not going to want to miss. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Melissa and I'm so grateful and happy to have you here. Today I wanna thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video and I'm gonna show you guys how to use your Cricut, super simple, super easy, beginner stuff to make these Dollar Tree DIYs. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay friends, I'm so excited to show you guys how to make this little sign. So we're gonna start off with two of these love signs from Dollar Tree that I got back at Valentine's Day. And I like these because they are a little bit thicker than they are longer, or I should say they're wider um, than they are the longer skinnier signs, if you guys know what I'm talking about. So I take two of them, take the hanger off, and then I take jumbo popsicle sticks that I got from Walmart and I glue it together now don't <laughs> don't make the same mistake I did I do this all the time I glue on the wrong side of the sign you always want to glue on the side that has the design on it that way when you flip it over you have a flat clean surface to work with so once I uh, fixed my boo-boo and my mistake I flipped it over to the right side that I needed to glue it and then I took my jumbo popsicle sticks once again and used my Gorilla Hot Glue to glue that down. I did three and then in between the three, I cut down a, another one and then glued those to the middle, just giving it some more stability. Next, I go in with my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. I put those in the, I put it in the holes and then I quickly realized that I needed something behind the sign to hold that lightweight spackling in. So all I did was cut up the same jumbo popsicle sticks that I just used, just little strips and then glued those down to the back of the holes and then continued to um, spackle the holes. So I wanted to make this a box. Originally this was just gonna be a porch leaner sign. I wasn't gonna go any further. My daughter um, had to go th to the doctor so I didn't have enough time to do the projects that I wanted to do. Um, so I was just gonna do a quick sign and then I was like, you know what? This would be really, really cool with a planner box at the bottom. So I start off with these pieces of wood from Dollar Tree. Um, two of the pieces are square wood pieces and then the other piece, I don't know the exact measurement, but it is a good size. I'll grab the measurement for you guys and leave that in the description box below. But I just measure the width of my sign, mark it, cut that down. Next, I cut down some square dowels to fit on the sides of my box. That way, when I go to attach this, they attack, uh, they attach really easily. To attach the wood dowels to my square pieces, I just used a combination of wood glue as well as some hot glue. The wood glue is gonna make sure that your hold is gonna last and the hot glue is gonna hold it quickly. Once I had all of my dowels um, glued down to either side of the squares, then I glue that down with the same glue combination. Next, I take another piece of wood from Dollar Tree. I hold it up to the bottom of my box, mark it, cut it down, and then glue that down as well. Because I wanted the bottom to be a nice snug fit, I did end up taking off one of the sides, adjusting the bottom piece of wood, and then attaching the side piece once I had that bottom piece where I wanted it. Next, I go in with my Voodoo Dixie Belt Gel Stain, and I just stain my entire box. I love this color so much. It dries so quickly. It's just like the stain that I create with paint and water. Um, it's water-based, and it's non-toxic, so that's another reason I love it. Um, when I'm pregnant, I try to stick to as many non-toxic products as I can, and I just absolutely love the Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. So definitely check out DixieBell.com, not affiliated or anything. I just love their products. I then sand down my spackle holes and then tape off at the top and the bottom, making sure to take my vinyl cut out 
and lay it down that way it doesn't um, overlap on my stripes. I kind of wanted that brown to show through since the uh, box at the bottom was going to be brown. I wanted to tie the colors together. So I just taped that off and gave it a distressed coat of my Dixie Belle um, chalk paint in caviar. And then I hit it with my blow dryer just to ensure that it's really dry and it dries quickly because if you guys have been around for any amount of time, then you know that I am super impatient. When I pull back that tape, I just love those crisp lines. And then I go in with some hot glue and I just glue my box down to the bottom. Now, if you wanted to make this a sturdier hold you can use like super glue and you could also like staple this from the back but I was kind of in a time crunch so um, when I get a spare moment I will definitely do that but for now um, hot glue held it just fine to finish this off um, I wanted some kind of decoration in the front I've had these would you bend little decorations I'm not really sure what to call it for the longest time and I thought that taking one of these and painting it white and then taking my antique gold rub and buff and just lightly um, painting some strokes over that would look really really cool on the front of this box so that's exactly what I did and then to attach this to my box I just used a little bit of hot glue Let me know down in the comments, would you guys have left this box plain or do you like that little detail that I added to it? So now we need to cut our design. I'm gonna take you guys to the design space. You're gonna open a new project and you're gonna start off measuring your sign and adding a square to your canvas. Once you have your square to your canvas, then up at the top where the size is, you're going to unlock it. I couldn't figure it out for a second, but you're going to unlock it and then you're going to add in your measurements. You then just want to, down in the left hand corner, you're going to um, click it down to 25%, that way you could see your whole canvas. And I personally could not find a design that I liked on Design Space for this particular design. So all I did was went to Google, I typed in the keywords that I wanted to find, I came up with an image and I bought it for $1.99. It's totally worth it because if not, then you have to go in and like clear out all the negative space for your design. And when you buy them, it's already done for you. So once I purchase it, I download it to my computer. I then go into Cricut Design Space on the left hand side and click upload. I then add that into my design space and then I'm going to add that into my canvas. Next I'm going to click on my design. I'm going to unlock that sizing as well and then you can take it in the corner and you can just adjust it from the corner or you could once again type in your measurements but I personally once I have my square or my shape there and the reason for that I meant to mention is that way you can see your sign on the canvas and with your design you can play with the sizing as if your sign was right in front of you before you cut it you're going to delete that and then click make it if you're going to make it from your phone like I am you're just going to save it to the cloud at the right at the top right hand corner of design space you're just going to click save save your project and then once you pull up design space on your phone all you have to do is click the three lines at the top right hand corner click projects in the cloud select your project and then go through the prompts on your phone it literally um, gives you prompts it's really not hard to do you guys and I just wanted to tell you guys why I love the Cricut Maker 3 so much it quickly and accurately cuts 300 plus materials from the most delicate paper and fabric to tougher stuff like mat board leather and balsa wood you can make the most amazing projects with balsa wood they also have more tools so the Maker 3 offers the widest range of tools for cutting scoring writing adding decorations decorative effects and much more. I also love the new look of the machine um, and also my favorite favorite feature is all of the matless materials that cuts your project time 
down so much and I can appreciate that because it does take some time but with the new smart cutting materials you can get projects done so much faster. You can customize it to your liking, click make it and then all you have to do is follow the on screen prompts. The Cricut is a smart cutting machine that allows you to create personalized personalized projects with hundreds of materials. It works with a software called Design Space that comes free with your machine, and this is where you can create your projects and browse from hundreds of images and fonts. Once you've created your design, like I said, Design Space will just send it right to your machine to cut. Once it cuts out, then all you have to do is weed it. Now, depending on your project, you might have to reverse weed it or regular weed it. For this particular project, I did not have to reverse weed it. And once I was done, I attached it to my transfer tape and then I laid it down on my sign and I pulled back the transfer tape. Now, the trick with this is make sure you go very slow. You are watching where you are pulling and also, the biggest trick is to fold this down flat and pull it flat over the vinyl and that's going to make your life 10 times easier. You can also take your scraper tool and kind of scrape it down while you're pulling the transfer tape um, and if that makes absolutely no sense you can see what I'm doing here but that's also a really good technique that helps out a lot. Now this does take some time and some patience, but with a little bit of time and patience, you can make the most amazing signs and uh, projects. I just absolutely love the way that this porch leaner turned out. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of this project. Okay friends, moving on to the next project. This was so super easy. All I did was take a sign from Dollar Tree. I took my mini chip brush and that same Dixie Belle Voodoo stain that we used in the previous project. And I just lightly dry brushed some of that stain around that natural wood. And then to give it a little bit of dimension and character, I took some more of that rub and buff on the end of my paintbrush and just randomly gave it some streaks throughout the wood. I also gave it some random streaks in the chalkboard part and then I took some white Waverly chalk paint and that same mini chip brush dry brushed a little bit as well and then I took a wet paper towel and I just wanted to tone down that distressing a little bit. Next I go into my Cricut design space and I ended up finding um a wording that I liked. I did not find an image that I liked. So what I did was I mo I measured the bottom square of the house and then I put that into design space with the measurements. I then took a triangle and I just attached it to the top of that square. That way I could kind of get an idea of how to place my design. So I ended up picking out that market fresh produce wording. And then I wanted like a truck at the top, but I just could not find a truck or any design that I truly liked. So once again, I used several different um, design you know, sites. One is designbundles.net, um, but that didn't really have a truck that I liked. So I just went to Google. I typed in um, a farmhouse truck or something of that nature. And then I found this gorgeous one. I love the little lamb on the bales of hay in the back of the truck. So that's why I ultimately went with that one. When you buy images, Sometimes they will send it to your email. That's what this place did. So I just went into my email. I downloaded it to my computer once again and inserted it into Design Space. Next, I unlocked the sizing again, and then I just got it to the size that I liked it. I fixed it on my quote unquote sign. So like my fake sign in Design Space. And then I put the wording underneath once I was satisfied with the way that it looked. Then I removed the triangle and the square from the back of the design. And then I selected the entire thing 
and welded it together. What that's going to do is when you send it to your machine, rather than it cutting the truck and the wording separate, it's going to cut it as one design. Once again, I click make it, send it to my machine, and then follow the prompts on the screen so that my machine can cut out my design. One trick that I've learned for weeding is if you have a light pad, now I actually have the Cricut light pad just in the move, it got uh, packed away, and I just have not gotten to that box just yet. But I did have this cheap little um, light pad, which I was very, very thankful for. And it helps you to see all of those little details much better than if you were to just weed it regularly. Once I had this one weeded, once again, I take my transfer tape and I pull up my design from the backing sheet. Last but not least, I lay my design down on my sign, making sure to smooth it down so that way the vinyl sticks to my sign. And then I go in, or and then I just go ahead and take that transfer tape off. Now, because this design had such little teeny details, I did go in with some tweezers and just remove those little um, letters. I'm sure you cannot see it, but it says life is better in the country in the hay bales. I think that would be a really, really cute sign by itself but nonetheless look how cute it looks at the top of this sign and I just absolutely love the way that it turned out let me know down in the comments what you guys think Okay friends, moving on to our last and final project. If you guys made it this far, <laughs> if you guys made it this far, leave me a heart down in the comment section that way I know that you're still here. But I just went on Design Space, I picked out a cute little design. This one says Farm Sweet Farm, and I used my black permanent vinyl to cut it out. Now this is the smart cutting material, and this tray that you see that attaches to your machine is going to hold the entire roll. That way, if you have really big size projects, you don't have to cut and measure it first. You just set your roll right into um, this little tray and it feeds it into the machine and then once it's done if you see that blue little button to the left all you have to do is slide it it cuts your design and you can put your roll away obviously next once it's done cutting then I weed it and attach it to my transfer tape Now I kind of did this backwards. I should have did my house before I pulled my design up, but that's okay. I just left it sticky side up somewhere where my kids couldn't get to it while I work on this part. So I take this little house wood cutout from Dollar Tree and I give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I go in with my design and I lay it down however I like it. Now, it did hang off the edges a little bit. I guess I um, messed up my measurements a little bit because this originally was going to be a totally different project and I tried three times, you guys. It just kept flopping and I was just so over it that this was plan B. So anyway, um, I laid down my design. I cut off the excess that hung off the edges and then I removed my transfer tape very, very carefully. Last but not least, I glue my sign down to this little chalkboard from Dollar Tree and then I made a simple bow out of this gorgeous farmhouse ribbon from Dollar Tree, glued that down to the house as well. And that was it, you guys. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. I love that white house against that chalkboard. I don't know, would you guys have just left the house alone or would you have attached it to the chalkboard? I wanna thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video. You guys, the sponsors really help our channels out to 
keep them running and keep us going. So anyway, you guys, let me know now. Let me know down in the comments which project you're going to be re recreating. I would also love to see your recreations. If you guys tag me on Instagram at allthingscrafty2, I would love to share them. I just love seeing you guys recreate my stuff. So you guys, with all that being said, per usual, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you guys so much. If you would please be kind enough to share this out. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I am seven months pregnant with a baby boy and my big goal is to get to 100K by October when I have him and I can't do that without your help. So don't forget, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And with all that being said, if nobody has told you today, you're absolutely amazing and gorgeous. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.